Greetings, fellow humans. Today on Exploring Limitations, we are going to travel around the apartment and somewhere else in the neighborhood and show you how to set up a totally mobile and very DIY reverb chamber. Here we go. Some of you may be asking yourselves, what is a reverb chamber? Basically, it's just any room or space that has natural reflections that we can send an audio signal to and collect those reflections via a microphone. All major studios throughout recorded history utilized one or several reverb chambers. Capitol Studios in LA has eight chambers. Abbey Road has a famous small tiled room in the basement with a bunch of sewer pipes for pillars. And uh, Motown featured a reverb chamber in its attic. Being from Metro Detroit, it was visiting the Motown Museum and seeing this attic chamber where I was first introduced to the whole concept of echo chambers. What equipment do you need? To make a reverb chamber, all you essentially need is a speaker and a microphone and obviously a space where you like the natural reverb sound. I truly don't believe the specific gear is important, but today I am rocking a laptop computer with a DAW, a USB interface with two inputs, a small diaphragm condenser mic, but any mic will do, and this, a $17 portable speaker that has a wired line input. Most tutorials on YouTube on this concept of building a DIY echo chamber will recommend using a powered studio speaker monitor. And I couldn't agree more. If you have that option and you're just doing stuff around the house, that is certainly gonna be the best sound quality. However, I wanted to see if we could be totally mobile, which is why I'm using this little POS speaker. <laughs> to send the signal uh, from my interface to this speaker, I picked up, I just picked up a Y cable. It's two monos, mono outputs or inputs to a uh, eighth inch stereo jack. And that uh, line runs out to this little POS speaker and you can use it as your literally your monitors from your interface. I'm interested in this mobility uh, for all of us, especially cheap mobility, because I don't know what you have in your neighborhood. Uh, do you have an old abandoned building that's safe that you can record in? Do you have a cave near? You know, you record your dry cello signal at home, but you don't want to drag your cello to the to the cave in your neighborhood and and record the echo sounds. Well, you just you just pick up one of these, my friend, and you will uh, will get something. I'm not going to say it's going to be the best thing, but it will be something. But we're going to hear what it sounds like coming up. Quick side note, I did do a trial run of this experiment a few days ago with a Bluetooth speaker. But as you can imagine, the latency was way too extreme to deal with or to compensate for. There was no... I was... I was looking for full, full mobility and wirelessness, but uh, I don't have... I, I don't have what it takes. The experiment. Okay, let's get to it. Just to reiterate, I sent a signal, be it a drum, bus, or vocal, or a guitar track, out to this little speaker. I have a mic set up in that same space near the speaker, and I use the microphone to capture the sound of the natural reverberant sound of the room or wherever it is. I recorded reverb in my bathroom, and I recorded in the stairwell of a former pencil factory, now a studio in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. So coming up, you're just gonna get a rapid fire of the different sounds. I'm going to play the dry signal of the source, then I will play the soloed signal from the echo chamber in my bathroom, and then the soloed signal from the echo chamber of the pencil factory. Then I will play my personal blend of the dry and wet of each of those reverb chambers. There will be no dialogue in the upcoming experiment. I've explained it and you just need to hear it. So check it out.
Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. Embrace the strange, let in the change, find yourself again. So there you have it, your very own mobile DIY reverb chamber. Pretty neat, huh? It's not technically DIY because what, did you build the building? I mean, come on, that's not DIY. I see two great reasons to incorporate this technique into your recordings. Number one, it's inexpensive. Ta-da! Number two, it's fun and it's creative. You will get totally unique sounds if you are willing to put in this little extra work. Uh, I happen to be using just a single microphone, but if I had a stereo microphone or a stereo pair lying around, uh, I would have even done that because it's all. I think it's always good to even have a, a stereo image of a of reverb and really helps you. Uh, feel the space. So if you got that, go for that. Uh, no plugin exists that emulates exactly what we got today. Maybe that's for the better. <laughs> I, I don't know. Now remember, once you've captured this reverb sound, you can process it even further. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some of my in-the-box techniques I would use to affect the signals that we recorded today. The modern audio world is your salty oyster. With that, as always, peace. And be good to each other. Can you tell that my apartment is actually crooked? It's actually not the camera. It's the apartment. It's tilted. See, watch me slide.